Fano and welcome to another episode of ADHD in Cars. This is probably the millionth time I've filmed this. Um, I've actually completed the work I was trying to do a YouTube video for, but I reviewed some of the footage and I'm, you know, OCD is buggery and I'm just not happy with it. Um, excuse me. So, long story short, my black RS6, um, as, as, as I possibly have mentioned in another video, has quite a considerably large amount of problems. And one of those problems is oil consumption, oil leaks. And uh, I was having a wee look under the hood the other day and I decided, shit, I want to take me little, these little things, I haven't even got them out. I want to take me lovely, me lovely carbon covers off to keep them safe because they're going to be going on warship. So I want to take those off to keep them safe, give them a nice clean. And when I took them off, I noticed that one of the PCV pipes, um, particularly this one, which is in several pieces, um, had electrical tape around it. So, you know, couldn't help myself. I had to touch it, didn't I? I touched it and it just melted apart. And I was like, shit. And it just sort of fell out. Because it was sort of just plugged in to, to, to this end, was just slotted in. And I was like, well, that's not good. And I thought, right, well, I've got one of these on warship that's in really good condition. I can take it off, can't I? And so as I went to remove it, it uh, continued to fall apart, didn't it? Turns out this bit was just slotted in, and uh, this was just slotted in, and it's not meant to be like that. Um, and I was like, oh, dear. And the last bit I went to remove was this T-joint here where it goes down and under the intake manifold. And um, as you can see, it just broke. And so it went from oh shit to oh shit. And uh, it ended up being that I had to dig in quite deep to get it out. So we got the parts I needed off Warship. Um, whilst I was removing the parts off Warship, um, part of the process is the PCV valve has to come off first. This isn't the one from Warship. This is a another very poorly repaired one. But basically, long story short, when, when, when you take these things off, and they're old, they break. You do not glue them back together, put them back in, and hope for the best, which is what has been done with the black RS6. So as you can see, the, the break there is on the gasket. This, this actually sits on the cam cover on the left bank, if you're looking at the vehicle from the front. Um, so that would be the right-hand side bank um, for a right-hand drive car. Um, whatever it's on the left when you're looking at the front brilliant and i didn't know that was broken but anyway you have to take it off to carry on to take off the um the throttle bodies to then take off the manifold um so i thought jeepers i better do a video i got halfway through it and started doing hyperlapses and whatnot and none of it really worked very well i'm like well i need a good introduction to this one. i'm gonna you know be sharing how not so easy this particular job is i need something decent which you know is this video here, part of the video here so surprisingly i didn't need that many tools what i did need a boatload of was patience now in order to do this job i needed what's called a 12 point torx or spline bit this is an m8 size m8 12 point torx or spline bit uh, that is for each of the four bolts on each of the throttle bodies Next thing you needed was one of these, I don't know what effect they're called, grabby, grabby, squeezy thingy that changes in, in size, whatever. Doesn't really help, but you need it. I used, well, I don't know where the other one is, two different, a short and a long flathead screwdriver, pair of pliers, ratchet, and an extension, as much extension as you can, because you'll need it in some instances, with a T30, I believe this is, T30 normal Torx bit but it also pays to have another T30 here. So they, those were the main tools I used, nothing really more than that. And of course, you know, cloth to wipe things down. Righty-ho, so got me little table made fabulous. Now I have an outdoor workbench, that's what you're sitting on. OCD, needed something because I need something to put everywhere, everything somewhere I can see it all nice and easily. So that little pipe that I just showed you before, is supposed to be this huge single unit here um, and I've managed to get it detached from everything but the same piece that broke on the other car it won't detach from that and I don't want to break it and I've already 
done some cosmetic damage to it, still functional. Um, so effectively I have to take this big beastie off. was filled with some um, something <laughs> I think it was plastic or epoxy or god knows what but we've managed to clear it out so um, the replacement for this from Audi I had quoted uh, was going to be a Kitha $1300 for this is part number 17 and this is part number 27 fuck me so um, obviously I'm not really wanting to spend that kind of money on a car I'm going to dismantle soon but I still need a daily driver so I don't know which clips are going to end up where in this particular video that I'm doing and of course there is no uh, method methodology to it whatsoever but uh, I figured well I'll just stick the camera on and fucking film and we'll go from there and because it takes so long, what I'm doing takes such a long time, I film it in hyperlapse and then I go from there and decide how to put it all together. So, without further ado, we'll carry on. <laughs>
out of light last night and uh, we just have this wee bugger to put back on and this wee bugger to put back on but connecting this little bastard here that little bugger in there has proven quite a challenge so again not sure how this is going to end up but I'll do a wee hyperlapse for that as well and then I'll mash it all together and we've got a Facebook mod, a YouTube video Righty ho. Hopefully this works well. First time I shivers. Well, that didn't bloody work, did it? No. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, righty, Aphrodite. Right. Oh, righty. So, haven't used this particular bloody um, camera before, so looking for a good excuse to use it. So I'll run you through what we had to do. So to start off with, I had to start on this side. First thing I ended up having to take off was the air, the intake temperature sensor. So those two come off, that comes out. Then I have access to this pipe here. Once this pipe comes off, behind that is that little annoying pipe I was telling you about that you can then unclip and remove. And then of course you go undo that, undo that, and undo that, and you should be able to pull it out. Um, after that, you have to take this off. Now I was very cheeky and I didn't take the box underneath off, I just sort of pulled it back slightly and then I was able to get access to the PCV valve which is that unit there. You then take that off and then you can take this off and once you take that off you can then access that one bolt under there because of course you can get to everything quite easily here and on this side you obviously where did we start with that one? I don't think I needed to take that out. I just unclipped that and then I undid that, undid that, undid that and then under there, that clip there, that clip there and off she came. And it was this pipe here. See how it's a single piece unit? We replaced this, we replaced that, I replaced that little valve I think in there and the piping. What I found was that that clamp down there wasn't in place and it was leaking out of there. Oil was leaking out of here and also leaking out of the poor quality repair there and leaking from here and this of course was leaking like a sieve um, so once we replaced all of that because I had to then go vroom, undo all of that and I'll take you over to this one so as you can get an idea this is our crash damaged RS6 who's kindly donated the system um, whilst I get myself sorted so just so you can see what it looks like that's where your PCV valve sits and we had a serious leak from there on the other side. Now, obviously I don't want crap getting into the top of the engine because this is a very good condition engine. Um, what I also found is I don't have replacements for these one use only crimp clamps. Um, so on that one there, I was able to get everything off at the back and then lift it forward to get access to the one thing down there, which if I lift this up here, because I haven't bolted it back down, it was to go oh, hang on. it was to go in down there and undo that the other problem I found when I was in here on the black RS6 um, was that my valve my, these, these are what do they bloody well call them these are your intake manifold flaps or intake port flaps that open and close as required on demand for the engine speed airflow etc etc to give you a better response those on the black RS6 are becked and they are sealed shut which is fabulous um, but with everything being so breakable on the black RS6 me not having these clips etc available I decided to stop at just replacing the pipework because I don't really know if I want to go any further and put thousands and thousands of dollars worth of parts on this onto that 
um, but that sort of gives you an idea of what we had to undo. It's quite a clever little system, the PCV system. It forms part of the um, dry lubrication system. So effectively, it'll send gases from the cam cover here and from the cam cover there, circulates them into your oil recirculation system there. That's your fine oil separator. It'll separate the heavy oil droplets from the gases that are in the oil, so your fuel, etc., and then sends them back to this little plate at the back of your intake manifold. And you have coolant running through that plate to keep it warm, um, according to the Audi book I read, or Audi guide I read, quite clever. Um, what they were saying was that uh, the gases at high speed do freeze, so they have coolant running through it to keep them warm. And you'll see in there, there's two little, there's one on each side, where the gases come out and go back into your intake and form part of your combustion system. Um, very, very clever tech. Very clever tech. So as you can see, it looks daunting with all the shit that's there, um, but it's actually a relatively simple job. Now, if I wanted to do it all properly, um, take the manifold completely off, the whole front end would have to come off as well because that would give me easier access to all of this crap down here. Righty ho, so hopefully that gives you a, a reasonable idea of what it's like to replace things like the PCV system or to get in and do anything under the manifold. Very time consuming, so sort of run over it again just to take the manifold off. Um, 12 point M6 Torx bit, T30 Torx thingy. T30 Torx thingy on ratchet and extensions. Pliers. Two of these buggers, short one and long one. Plus this for your clamps and a shitload of patience. Um, obviously, if you want to do it really like good and proper, front bumper has to come off, and that will give you access to everything under the, the manifold itself. And when you're taking these components off, you should also be replacing all the gaskets. Don't do what I did and just put it all back together and go, Woo! hopefully she'll be all right. Thankfully, the end result is 90% of my oil leaks are gone. There is still a small leak at the rear on the left bank when you're looking forward. Um, so that'll be an engine out job very clearly, which I'm just not going to bother with because there's no point in me spending that kind of money on it. Um, typical ADHD, I've just lost my train of thought. But it does idle a lot better. A lot less oil consumption, thank goodness for that. A lot less smoky and it's just not misfiring as much. Unfortunately after doing all of that we now have a new set of errors um, which relate to the intake manifold flaps which are now seized shut. So I'm just toying with do I bother or you know because we're about to sell Get the, get the T4 ready for sale, my transporter. We just need to do the rear suspension bushings and the front wheel bearings, um, and then it's going to be sold, and then I'll buy a new daily, and then I will dismantle the crap out of the, the RS6, and at that point, it's of no consequence to me whatsoever. Um, and yes, yes, there is still a Sephiro behind me. There are videos coming for this. Currently the head is away getting redone because we had no compression on most of the cylinders. Once that comes back, I put it back together, make it run really nice, and I tune. And I'll, I'll do some videos on that as well. But that there concludes our little overview of me horribly replacing PCV parts on the V10.